triple X, right? So when you put that element on a triple X woman, it looks like it's floating in space, right? It's not, it might be graded up, but it's not graded up enough in my opinion, my opinion. Okay, so I get it. Like, it is difficult to grade patterns. It's not like a wicked easy thing to do. And there are some design elements that don't grade well. For example, in this pattern, this is a side panel, right? This is like, if you didn't have a pocket there, this would be one piece, right? So the pocket actually runs the full width of that panel. So I understand that on this pa the available sizes, that pattern might be this, that panel might be like this wide. And so it's reasonable for that pocket to be this wide. On my size, it would need to be like this wide. And so it's not reasonable to have a, pa a pocket that's that wide, right? So there are problems when you scale up a pattern. Those design elements get funky, okay? I, I gotta work around for you, but just a minute. So I get it, but all of her patterns are sized like this, right? Like it's universally sized this way. I think that's problematic. I get it. Like the stockists for these are not, it's not like Butterick, you know what I mean? Like where Butterick has multi-sized patterns and they can have cabinets of patterns at your big Joanne fabrics and things like that. I get it. Like that's not the same business model for these independent pattern makers, but there's also online options. So I don't understand why you can't have the most popular size in your physical stores, but then also offer an, up, an upsized pattern online. Because most of these people have shops that they're selling through as well. Offer a digital pattern. And again, I understand some elements don't scale up well. That's cool. But all of the patterns are sized like And again, I don't know about this. I don't know anything about the pattern design company. I am a total layman. But I think it's problematic. I'm just saying. So, I'm mega excited that there are pattern companies out here like this and I will support them endlessly. But it's also true that usually a pattern company, when it's an independent pattern designer, um, has kind of a look, right? They have their own brand. And this brand is much more upscale than I am. And I'm not saying that in like a judgy way. Or, it's just, it's a more formal looking look than I personally like. So, I guess I have to be a fancy person to learn how to make patterns. No, I don't. <laughs> that would require lots of funding. <laughs> So anyway, long story short, I really debated about what to do. Like, I am not an experienced garment sewer. I know a lot of people think, oh, you're a great sewer. I sew craft sewing, which is a totally different ballpark. Completely different. It's like if you only knew how to knit washcloths and then somebody gave you a size extra small sweater pattern and told you, like, you need to make it in an extra, extra large. Right? Like, like it's not my set of skills. But I want to learn about it because, hi, I am this body and I live in it, and I am in the world in it, and it's good. So I would like to put clothes on it that I like. <laughs> and I would also like to make those clothes because I would like to know where they come from. I would like them to be more durable than the clothes I am currently finding. And I would like them to be more of an expression of who I am. So, I had this total debate about what to do. Should I try to make this pattern more casual? I think this is so, lots of folks, I did this on Instagram. So if you're like, I did this on Instagram and these were great, super great responses. So I am a size, I think I said I was a 56, but I think I'm a 54. Anyway, this largest size is a 40 inch bust. So I would have to increase this by like 14 inches, which is kind of crazy. Now that said, it doesn't have any um, bust darts. It's very simple. The pattern is essentially five pieces. So it's not a terribly involved sewing project. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have a sleeve. So that's like easier to not have to try to figure out how to adjust the sleeve of the body to mat. It's, you know, it's, if I were going to have to upscale a pattern, it'd be much easier to do something like this than something like this. I think. So the question was like, okay, so which one should I do? But also, how would I make this pattern feel more casual? Feel like more like my aesthetic? And there were great ideas. And so I will present them to you very succinctly. 
Who am I kidding? But the thoughts were, A, of course, fabric makes a huge difference, right? A playful fabric or, um, again, just like most of your quilters, cottons are very more casual looking fabrics than the perhaps an apparel fabric might be. Um, the other idea was to gather, woo, to gather this instead of pleating it. I think the pleating does make it look much more formal. Now this version is gourd, so you can see on the back the difference. So the gourd is a, in my head feels slightly more form fitting than I want it to be, but maybe that's just in my head, right? Like I don't have a lot of experience. So that was one option. The other option was to use the bodice pattern and not do the underbust pleats. So that would make it much less of a tailored look to remove those underbust pleats. Um, and so if I kind of like messed with that a bit, maybe made the skirt slightly less full because I am wearing it more of as a tunic than necessarily a dress. So like that combination. So those are not terribly hard like hacks to do, right? I could basically take out the waistband. I don't even need the waistband. Um, so if I did the bust or the bodice, and I so I might still do this. Thinking about it more and more, and maybe I should. I might do the bodice without the underbust dart. The side bust dart, yes, but not the underbust dart. Take out the waistband, and again, make this a gathered skirt, maybe slightly less full. So that was that option, which I think is a great option. And of course you could do those in different pieces if you wanted that like bohemian -y kind of look, but that's not what I did. I did the ridiculous thing. <laughs> I upscaled this pattern. So dun -dun -dun, I did decide, usually I'm a fan of a wearable muslin, like something that I'm not married to fabric wise, so that if it doesn't work out, I'm not in tears. Like you don't want to use your precious precious, but something that I can still wear. This time I was like literally like this fabric I bought for a lining of a bag that I'm not going to do anymore. So it was literally just in the stash taking up space. So it's clowny. <laughs> I told my family like before I tried it on, nobody make fun. <laughs> this will not be worn outside the house, except it totally will be probably. But like that's not my goal. So just to shushy. There was a lot of shushy. So I'm telling you now, shushy. And I'll show you what it looks like here. So here is my wearable muslin. Here's with the cardigan, which is how I probably will wear it most of the time. Fat lady arm exposure therapy session about to happen for both of us. Whew. So here it is without the cardigan. Now, I did not put pockets in this version because I was just trying to see if it would even fit upon my body, but it did okay. So there it is. I forgot to mention, let me, before I go on, I forgot to mention that there were also people said who, oh, like, oh, that's not flattering to do gathers. Flattering is not where I'm at at this point. I'm just not. <laughs> I have already biologically procured my mate. <laughs> I'm over flattering. Who am I kidding? I don't have to work in the professional world. I don't have to look a certain way. Moo Moo Apron, that's where I'm at y'all. I'm into fun, I'm into comfort. So yes, I know it's not the most flattery look. In my, it, it, as an aside, this fabric has not been washed. It's not been ironed. Cause it literally just, I just did it to see if it would fit on my body. And it's not, it's not the most flattering color on me. And it's also very stripy and clown tinty. <laughs> that said, I totally did it. Shut up. Oh, if, if I turned around, I didn't put, there's like a button in the back. I didn't put that on. Cause again, it's not really, it's just a fake thing. I didn't put the pockets in because again, I was just trying to see if it was even going to fit on my body. I totally did. So I'm so proud of myself. I'll talk more about how I actually modified the pattern in an episode after Marilyn Sheep and Wool because I want to do kind of a better justice than I would just hear um, and maybe also make it like a searchable episode for other people who want to upscale this pattern. So that is my goal. Send a thank you out to the Patreon and PayPal donators.
Okay. If you'd like to see things like that, you can also become a Patreon or PayPal donator. But I'm gonna do that after Maryland Sheep and Wall. So I'll do, I won't, I don't think I'll do like a full how to grade a pattern thing because that's beyond my skill, like that's not my skill set. But there are craftsy classes. Um, there is a craftsy class about grading patterns and it's, I highly recommend it. That said, I'm actually telling you what's on my body. What? I'm beyond my Stacey and Clinton. It just, because it fits on you, doesn't mean it fits you. Shishi. <laughs> so I've also started a real one. What? I totally do. I'm not going to show it to you on because I don't have the, the, this pattern is written for a facing. I'm not doing a facing. I'm over facings. A, it's like extra fabric. B, I just don't want all that extra bulk. Now this facing would not be very big because it's just this front, like this is the only part that gets a facing. It's not under your arms or anything, but like, I don't care. So I just did, see, see it's such a throw together that I didn't even use like anywhere near matching bias tape. So I just did bias tape on the neck and armholes like I did on like my num my 100x of sewing dresses, the dress number ones. Just did that. Cause I don't care. Actually, I do care. I care enough not to do the facing. Ding. <laughs> so here, I did one that's a solid one because I had this fabric and I wanted to make something out of it. So, oh. right. So I'm just waiting to get some more bias tape. I know I can make bias tape. I've done it many times before, but I'm not gonna lie. I totally dig the pre-made bias tape. It's crisper and so much easier to work with. I totally dig it. I enjoy the fun of the homemade bias tape that you can make it like whatever you want. So I totally enjoy that part of it, but I really like the pre-made bias tape. It's so crisp. You just fold things under it. It's like snap, snap. Ooh. It's like Lego bias tape. It's amazing. So I don't have the bias tape on this one yet, but it's otherwise done. And pocket. Now, this, I was pretty accurate when I said my pocket would be this wide. This is how wide the pocket is. Now, if I put this on without having done the modification that I did, this would totally gap out, I feel. I'm pretty confident that it would really gap out. So what I did, I'll say this briefly. I just sewed, like on the inside of the pocket, I just sewed a little seam in here, right here. So that my pocket's kind of like subdivided. So this pocket is actually And by the way, who needs a knitting bag? Oh wait, you do, because I sell those. But I'm just saying. <laughs> right? I'm just saying. So I'm super excited. I'm really proud of myself. I'm not gonna lie. Go me. <laughs> So yeah, and the wearable muslin was a great idea. Well, the muslin was a great idea because I actually made the pattern bigger than I needed to. Um, I added some width in here that I ended up taking out. I added extra width on the sides. I ended up not taking all of it out, but like taking out some of it. So it was a great idea to do wearable muslin or a wearable muslin would have been fine ultimately, but a muslin neither here, either here or there. What am I even saying? I don't know. But my God, totally made a dress, yo. It has buckets, yo. Um, I totally have fabric coming that's super house coaty. Oh my god, I'm so excited. So I'm hoping to get that one done by Marilyn Sheep and Wall. So if you see a giant fat lady who is glowing with happiness, who looks like she showed up in her mammal's house dress, well, that's me. Come say hi. <laughs> I'll be embarrassing my bestie. <laughs> no, she won't be embarrassed. She didn't care. So those are my sewing shenanigans. I'm really proud of myself. I'm not gonna lie. Super fancy, y'all. So anyway, it's like a thing. I don't keep showing you. <laughs> I made a thing. And even though like it took a long time to upgrade the pattern, I did it in a day. I had this muslin sewn. Like I started the muslin in the evening, the day that I adjusted the pattern, and I had the muslin sewn by the next day. 
Like it's so much faster than knitting. I'm excited. So there's that. Living the health stress life, y'all. That's right. Thank you. This pump. Okay, so now let's talk about knitting and spinning. <laughs> Okay, I finished some stuff. I showed you my yarn, right? Okay, let's talk about spinning first. I showed you my yarn, I washed some fleece. I also finished my first bobbin of Hip Strings Pros, colorways Pros, and the base is 62.5% Polworth, 25% Tessa, and 12.5% flax. So there's my first bobbin. Here's like a little nest of it. Wait, let me show you a nest that has like a good purpley, orangey bit. It's gorgeous. All right, look at that orange in there. Oh, orange. Orange. I love it, orange. Super enjoy. I am really enjoying it. I like, I like Polworth anyway. I usually kind of people, it seems like people fall into either a Pullworth Rambouillet versus Merino camp. And I'm definitely in the Pullworth Rambouillet camp. So, very and very affordable. Four ounces was $20. And again, that's Hip Strings. You can find them at hipstrings.com. They always have lots of good stuff and unusual blends. They have their own house yarn that is their, um, their own blend of wools. And you get these cute little, on their spinning cards they have, the back is printed with your, like your spinning card. How cool is that, yo? So they're awesome. And 62.5% of the I think they have engineering backgrounds. <laughs> Definitely the sciences and the maths. So there is that. Finished objects. I finished a pair of socks. So I'll put a picture here. So these are socks from my papa. They are uh, the bootstrap socks from Sock Architecture by Laura Neal, which that book was given to me by the author. Yay, her. She's so fancy. And then they are knit with tuku wool. Tuku? I don't know. It's Finnish. Um, I purchased this through the, woolen, the Wooly Thistle. And this is the sock weight. There's a fingering weight and sock weight. The sock weight is 80% Finnish wool, 20% nylon. And they have great colors. And I very much enjoy knitting with this yarn. I would love to do some color work with it like mitts, or I would really love to do a sweater. Um, but it feels like it's going to be a wonderfully wearing... It just feels great. It's it's scra it's not a superwash merino. Like, it definitely has more tooth to it. I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't make a hat with it. Maybe. I don't know. Or maybe if I made a hat with it, I would, like, do the brim with a, another wool. But definitely a sweater. It is rustic. I mean, it's, I shouldn't say it's rustic because that implies it's like uneven and stuff. That's not what it is, but it's not merino, okay? Saddle. It's not butter. But I dig it. And I think it would be amazing color work. So I really dig that. And also, I really like that it's sport weight rather than fingering weight because a lot of color work, I just have to admit, because I, I love the idea of doing like color work mitts and stuff, but sometimes I feel like this. Like stranding two colors and it's all tiny and. Sometimes it feels like this. I don't like that feeling. So I think this might be better. <laughs> it's sport weight. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that was it. That's all of it. Okay. So that's finished. And then I blocked my Hansel shawl. And that is by Gudrid, Gudrid Johnston. Oh my gosh. What's wrong with me? You know what I'm talking about. So it is a hap shawl. She offers it in the full hap, which is what this is. And she also offers it as a half hap. So that would be just the triangle. Right. Shut up. 
So mine is a little bit bigger than her pattern as written. I think the diagonal measurement of her pattern is 52 and the diagonal measurement of mine is 70. So what is that? 20 ish percent bigger. Um, And all I did was just this, it's knit from triangle point to triangle point, the middle square. So I just knit to the wider part, a little bit wider, and then just made the feather and fan match up when you got there. I dig it right. This is um, Brooklyn Tweed Loft, right? That's the fingering weight one. <sighs> oh my gosh. I've said it so many times that I can't remember. Is it bird's nest? No. Owl? I think it's owl. Let me in the show notes. But then the, <laughs> the uh, striped colorways are artifact, button jar, sap. Oh, pumpernickel's the brown. So artifact, pumpernickel, button jar, It's something. It's in the show notes. Um, sap and Hayloft. Hayloft is like the best color. Hmm. It's like the beauty of the um, Quince and Company honey, but in a woolen spun yarn. <laughs> so anyway, yay! So there's that. And it is very sizable. Okay. I can totally tuck it into my apron and do my things in the world. I forgot to mention, this green sweater I'm wearing <laughs> is the Kara. It's K-A-R-A. -A. Cecily Glauck McDonald. Quince and Company. Chickadee. Snap Pea. Okay. Right. So I dig it. I dig my hat. I was literally Weaving in ends with it on my body. Because it's so chilly last night. It's so damp this time of year. I should just be happy that there's water. But I was like sewing in my ends with <laughs> Capital K knitter, y'all. Okay, so then let's get into works in progress. I showed you my sock. I showed you this time, this this last time. This is the Canyonlands Shawl by Nim Teasdale. Ooh, it looks better on camera than it does in real life. <laughs> it looks slightly more vibrant or something. So there's that. It's I really enjoy this pattern. I knit, enjoy knitting this pattern quite a lot. Um, it's seven right side rows. Six of them are the same. One of them is different, and they're both and they're both very easy. But it gives you this fun little chevrony action at the edge of the shawl. I dig it. This is not my normal color at all. This is not for me, but I dig it, y'all. So it's great for hand spun. It's also, I think the pattern is written, a yarn suggested is like the Koigu, those, um, that fingering weight yarn. And she actually, I think, alternates it. She stripes it, which makes the, as you can imagine, makes the kind of chevrony action even more pronounced. This is hand spun fiber from Knit Spin Farm and spun right round. So it's a combo spin, one ply of one colorway and one ply of the other. I've also been like obsessing over a combo spin. I'm gonna, sh I'll do that too. Maybe after Marilyn Sheep will, I'll tell you about my combo spin. It's gonna be a big one. It's like six or seven skeins or six or seven bumps. So there's that. I showed you my socks. I've already said that twice, haven't I? So then I also started a Midas hat. Try to stretch out a little bit for you. What? So I'm I don't know who the Midas hat is by, but it's Midas, like the golden Midas. Midas hat. It has a very wide. 
is that, like three inches? Like a three inch folded brim. So it's great. It feels like it covers your whole ear with a double thickness. And because it's fingering weight knit a little bit loose, that's beautiful. Um, this yarn is self-striping by... My brain just like stopped working. <laughs> Nomadic Yarns. And this is her The Burrow colorway. So it's a Harry Potter colorway. Isn't that gorgeous? So I was not sure how the self-striping would work up in this many stitches, but I dig it. Right. So that's gonna be my Maryland Sheep and Wool knitting. So I got to the, but I joined the brim. So now it's just straight stocking up forever. So my eyes bleed. And then lastly, I am working on the Freya sweater, which is a Stephen Wet or is a Pro <laughs> It's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern, and I think it actually is by, I don't have the pattern piece, of course. I'll put it in the show notes. But I'm pretty sure it's by him. And I am knitting that in the Brooklyn Tweed quarry base, which I freely admit I poo-pooed when it came out. I was like, really? Single ply bulky? Who are we kidding? Apparently me, because I bought it. <laughs> so this is the Lazulite colorway. Um, it's 200 yards in a four ounce skein or 100 gram skein, I can't remember. So it's super lightweight. It's just like air. It's super lightweight for bulky wool. And it's actually like three plies barely twisted together. So it's not just one single ply but it's three plies barely twisted together. <laughs> but this pattern was released and I was immediately like, yep, need that. Crazy pants. And it has some fun little pops of tealy fleck in it. And so I've knit the back. Almost to the shoulders, y'all. And it's super long. I'm definitely gonna have enough yarn, maybe extra. But it's short sleeved below the hip with pockets as shawl collary. Oh my god. I'm living it. Pockets in my sweaters, pockets in my tunics, pockets in my house dress aprons, dresses, shirts, things. I'm never gonna lose my iPod again. It's gonna be amazing. I'm ready. Bring it. Bring it. It's the future, y'all. It's the future. So yeah, super simple construction. I did do a piece. I have not done a piece sweater since I can remember. I'm like, really? I haven't sewn a seam in a long time. And I actually cast this on to knit the body um, as one piece, but then did not. <laughs> My brain kind of just was like Wah. because there's an odd cast on and then the front panels like they're kind of like front panels for like the shawl color look. It's not really a shawl color but you know. So it's these big wide panels and they're slightly different than the the ribbing texture but it's like reverse and so I just was my brain was like Wah. so I had to undo the bottom. I had like an inch done but I just undid it. So yeah, <laughs> I'm digging it. I hope I will like it. I hope it wears okay. I don't expect it to wear well, but I hope it wears okay. <laughs> so that's in this crazy giant fat squirrel bag. That's right, Aaron's sweater bag. Good for bulky fat lady sweaters. Okay. If you're gonna be a Maryland sheep and wool needles up, this bag's gonna be there. Well, this bag won't be there, but bags like it will be. Right? Are you in love with that or what? That's all my knitting and spinning. Have I talked for nine years? It kind of feels like it. Okay, so very brief shameless self-promotion. I already talked about needles up, but let me also discuss. If you're not gonna go to needles up or Maryland Sheep and Wool, and you feel like you need a cathartic purchase to ease your pain, <laughs> 
I understand. So I'm gonna do a pre-order. Now, usually I try to have samples sewn up for you, but uh, did you, do you remember like earlier in that episode when I was talking about how I just feel like I'm not getting enough done? Well, I mean, I'm getting a lot done, but I'm not getting enough sewing done. <laughs> okay, I'm not getting enough work sewing done. So I did not actually get your samples done. And I was afraid if I waited, I would put this podcast off too long. So I'm just gonna show you the fabric. Well, that's right. It's all the sheep breeds, yo. So I'm gonna do a pre-order. There will be samples sewn up by then. <laughs> the weekend of Maryland Sheep and Wool. Um, I, I plan on opening it Friday evening. Um, we'll say at nine o'clock Eastern time. So that's is that May 3rd. It's the Friday, it's the first Friday of May. Um, I'll open it at nine o'clock Eastern time. That's my plan. And then I'll have it run at least for the weekend. So ending through Sunday. Now, there may be a limit. I'm not sure, but I don't think I'll put a limit on it. Um, well, that's not true. I mean, there will be some limit on it, but I don't think that we'll hit that limit. <laughs> and this will be a true pre-order, which means it can be up to six weeks for shipping. I usually try to get them out in four, but you know, life happens sometimes. Repetitive use injuries can happen and you know. So there will be both this colorway, which is green, It's just why not, right? So it'll be available in large wedge, sweater, and even Aaron sweater size. It's a little bit small print to do on an Aaron sweater, but sometimes you just need some sheeps. So um, it does have all the little breed names written on it. It's Finn and Teeswater and Winsleydale and Rambouillet and Romney and Icelandic and Cheviot, Cheviot and Gotland and I don't even know what that one is. Soe, Rommeldale, see there's just a ton. But how, Jacob, how cute. So we'll do that we get the Maryland Jacob Wool. And then, yeah, I don't know after that, we'll see what happens. Cause I mean, I need to spin an entire gray sweater's worth of yarn. I need to make approximately 9,000 uh, painted portrait dresses. I need to experiment with some Upton dresses. And there's a lot to do. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, I hope you have a lovely week. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye!